Hey, you. Yeah, you. Do you know what the most valuable Marvel Legends are from the Toy Biz era? I bet you don't. And if you don't, you're going to find out today. Because we're counting down on the top 10 most valuable Toy Biz Marvel Legends, and it starts right now. What's up, guys? Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to... If you're new here, my name's Matt, also known as Big Nerdy, and this is Nerdzoic. On this channel, we talk all about action figures, nostalgia, comic books, and all sorts of other nerdy fun stuff. We're taking a trip down memory lane back to the Toy Biz era of Marvel Legends. For some collectors, this is the bygone era that was the good times. For other collectors, it's... Why the hell do you guys love those things so much? Seriously, sometimes I think that the Toy Biz vs. Hasbro battle is more divisive than, like, I don't know, Republican vs. Democrat. It's crazy. So we're going to look at the 10 most valuable. We're not going to look at any Hasbros. We're only looking at Toy Biz. We're only looking at Men on Card. And we're not going to talk about any exclusives from any conventions or store exclusives or any of that. We're sticking to just single-carded figures. What are the top 10 most valuable? We're going to find out here. Before we get rolling, I do want to take a moment and talk about value and how you define value. Anytime I make one of these videos about how much toys are worth, someone always will write something to the effect of, they don't have a value, man. It's worth what someone will pay for it. Yeah, no kidding. That's why we use eBay values. It's what multiple people have paid for it aggregated together. Those values come to us courtesy of actionfigure411.com. Does your figure values actually matter? Not really. I mean, it's fun. It's fun to know. It's fun to know, hey, cool, I got something that's worth something. I enjoy knowing that I hunted down a figure or got a really great deal on eBay on a figure that's worth more than it says it is. By the way, you want to hear something crazy? These Toy Biz Marvel Legends, for those of you who weren't collecting during this time, they weren't for $7.99. Seriously, no wonder Toy Biz is dead. That's incredible. Could you imagine if we can get a six inch figure now for eight bucks? Coming in at number 10 is Mr. Sinister, released in 2005 as part of the Sentinel Build-A-Figure wave. He's currently going for $59. Mr. Sinister was created by Chris Claremont and first appeared in Uncanny X-Men number 212 in 1986. He's primarily an X-Men villain. He's actually got a pretty cool backstory. He is a 19th century biologist from London named Nathaniel Essex who was obsessed with Darwin and actually worked with him and he wanted to take his evolutionary theories to the next level. Yeah, that... that Definitely sounds like a X-Men villain to me. Coming in at number nine is Apocalypse, who was released in 2004 as part of Series 7 and is currently going for about $60 on eBay. This figure was kind of displaced a year later when the Apocalypse Build-A-Figure came out, and that was bigger and better, so this is all forgot. I am curious to see how this compares to the new Deluxe Apocalypse that just came out from Marvel Legends. Currently at night, as I lay in bed unable to sleep, I'm actually reading the Age of Apocalypse storyline for the first time and loving it. So if you want to know more about Apocalypse and all of the Age of Apocalypse type storyline stuff, check out Marvel Unlimited and you can see it all. Coming in at number 8 is Blade. Released in 2003, he was part of Series 5 and currently goes for about $61. This is a movie version of Blade. That means we're getting a Wesley Snipes. First appearing in the Tomb of Dracula comic book, number 10 to be exact, in 1973, Blade is a human-vampire hybrid whose goal is to rid the world of vampires. Maybe this figure's so valuable because you can combine him with a Rocky Balboa action figure and reenact scenes from Demolition Man. You remember that movie? I barely do. Coming in at number 7 is Cable, released in 2004 as part of Series 6. He currently costs about $72. Cable, aka Nathan Summers, is the biological son of Scott Summers and Madeline Pryor, which is Jean Grey's clone. Cable seems to be everybody's favorite time-traveling mutant, and really is a fan favorite. This is a beautiful looking comic book Cable too, with the blue matching his daddy Cyclops. Oh, great figure. Coming in at number 6 is the Juggernaut. Released in 2004 as part of Series 6, he's currently going for about $64. First appearing in X-Men number 12 back in 1965, the Juggernaut is actually Charles Xavier's stepbrother. This is one of the many versions of Juggernaut action figures, but it's not the best, I don't think at least. This one does have a removable helmet, and that's pretty nice. Is it bad that I can't say the dude's name without saying it like the guy does it in X3? I'm the Juggernaut, bitch! If you find yourself enjoying this fiscal analysis of the Marvel Legends figures, please go ahead and give me a thumbs up so I know to do more videos like this. And if you like, subscribe so you know when I do put more up. Coming in at number 5 is Moon Knight, released in 2006 as part of the MODOK Build-A-Figure wave. He's currently going for about $70. 
Moon Knight first appeared in 1975's Werewolf by Night, issue number 32. Many consider him to be the Marvel Universe's version of Batman, since Moon Knight and Bruce Wayne both are rich and both have fancy tech weapons. It's a great character design, and I love to see this guy come to life sometime in the MCU. Who do you think should play him? Christian Bale. Coming in at number four is War Machine. Released in 2005 as part of the Galactus Build-A-Figure Wave, it's currently going for $71. James Rhodey Rhodes was created in 1979 and first appeared in Iron Man number 118. This is a great comic book version of War Machine, and it's probably harder to find because of the bath that he completes. Bath is Build-A-Figure, which is Galactus, in case you didn't know. Coming in at number three is the Black Panther. Released in 2005 as part of the Sentinel Build-A-Figure wave, he's going for $83. This is the second figure from that Sentinel Build-A-Figure wave that made the top 10 list, which, that, that's interesting. That's probably one of the reasons it's so valuable. Black Panther first appeared in Fantastic Four number 52 back in 1966, and he was created by the maker himself, Stan Lee, as well as Jack Kirby. Again, this version came out long before Black Panther made his way into the MCU, but we see a lot of similarities in the design used for this action figure and the one we saw in the MCU. R.I.P. Chadwick, you're the man. Wakanda forever! Coming in at number two is Deadpool, released in 2004 as part of Series 6. He's currently costing about 100 bucks. At this point, everybody in the civilized world knows who Deadpool is, but he's a relatively new character, actually, having first appeared back in New Mutants 98 in 1991. He's probably the most popular new character I could think of. Can you guys think of anybody else? Maybe Harley Quinn, but obviously that's not Marvel. Anyway, this figure holds up really well, and many feel that it compares positively to the much-loved Juggernaut build-a-figure Deadpool. The other great thing about this figure is that it's a cool crossover with Ghostbusters, since it comes with Slimer. That's not Slimer? Seriously? Coming in at number one is Spider-Man from the 2005 Sentinel Build-A-Figure Wave. He is going for $141, making him the most valuable Toy Biz Marvel Legends figure. I guess it kind of makes sense that Spider-Man is the number one pick because he is the biggest character in the history of Marvel. Prove me wrong on that one. I hate the weird webbing that he comes with. It looks like he's going to the opera. For those keeping track at home, this is the third appearance of the Sentinel Build-A-Figure wave, which makes sense when you think about how much of that Build-A-Figure is going for. Last time I looked, even with the new HasLab project coming, a completed Sentinel is going for over 200 bucks. Question of the day, how many of the figures in the top 10 do you have in your collection? Before you leave, check out the videos up on the screen right now. On one side is the video that YouTube thinks you're gonna like. On the other side is the playlist of all of my Marvel Legends, and there's multiple value videos in there, so make sure you check them out. Until next time, be cool and stay nerdy.